Okay, so welcome to this review on the Hornby Mark III DB Schenker uh, DVT. And in this review, I uh, will first look at the looks and details and features of it. So all the really fine details like the printed cant line and in cab detail. Then we go under the body, take, show you how it take, comes off with the instructions and where a DCC chip would go and everything to do with that and pickups and how it runs. And lastly, the running and performance are then put this coach on a layout and we'll see how it runs and main features of this would be the lights and how it picks up and it's a really good model so um, so we'll begin with the looks details and performance it's, you can see the recommended retail price so I got this from Hamley's toy store in London which is quite surprising they have an extensive range of Hornby products and recommended retail price I got it at was 43 uh, pounds could probably get it cheaper at model shows and websites, but I just wanted this. I was in London and I wanted one, and it's a really good model. So if we take out the box, it's quite tightly fit. So I have to take off both flaps and push it from one end. It's a really nice model, though. It, it, it's much nicer when it comes out of the box. It just it, it amazed me. So let me take it out. It's much better packaging than the Hornby's original polystyrene, so here we have the instructions, which we'll have a look later. I'm going to go under the body, shows that take off. Some problems with that, so um, we'll get to that bit. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, I've already decently fitted it, so this is the original blank plug to make it just DC, taken out. Left there in case I want to change it, but it's looking pretty good. Uh, so we check it out. Very nice. So there it is, and it's well, I think it's quite a nice model. Um, so it's just basically Hornby's standard Mark III DVT, which they've they've made it quite a while back. But it's a new colour scheme they bring out in DB Schenker silver for the management train, and just it's very the, the pre-fitted details at the front. I haven't done anything to this apart from putting a chip and looking at a bit of history for this um, it was well this uh, coach as we'd call it uh, it was made for the class uh, 89 and class 90 uh, for a push pull service you'd have mark freeze and then this at the end as it has a driving cab at the end so it's a DVT stands for driving van trailer so it's a driving van trailer and this would go at the end of it and basically because uh, class 90s and class 98 are locomotive, you'd use this at the other end, so almost like a multiple unit, you'd go to the other end of the train, drive from that end with the locomotive pushing from the opposite. It was then later designed for the class 67, but um, with, uh, with this uh, train it includes driving cab as I explained, then with these doors they're actually baggage compartments to put baggage in, and lastly there's a guard compartment, and with the Hornby one it's quite nice. Um, there's actually a little guards chair and table and stick a guard in there of night. But there's no lights or anything, that's all in the cab, but we'll show that later. And the reason, well with most multiple units that go, you'd expect there'd be seats and stuff in the actual main body of it, not as much baggage, but back at the time it was built, it was deemed unsafe to have passengers in the front coach or locomotive that exceed 100 miles an hour in case it derailed or anything, it's just for safety, that's why with class 91, near of the driving van trailer, which was the Mark IV version, very similar front, but it was a Mark IV version, uh, they didn't have passenger seats in it, neither did the class 91 locomotive, and that's the reason why, but now, these days, safety's gone up, and if it was built, it might have had passenger seats for the Mark III, and as I said, it was later modified for class 67, I have a model here, it's another Hornby model. I think it was first modified by EWS to work for Class 67 and this was later adopted by other railway companies but that uh, EWS used it for their management train and this is this is the actual DVT for the management train but for DB Schenker originally said EWS in big letters but now it says DB Schenker so this would normally go with a, a silver DB Schenker 67 and you get the management train coach pack which Hornby also do so 
you can get the whole train from Hornby. I'll move this aside. And it just replicates that train. And they had to... I think there was some major modifications to the, the way power was... or signal was taken across the train to actually work for 67. And they don't really use it with 90s or... 89... I don't... 89s... They're just mainly for freight now, so... 67 is taken over from that, so... Bit of history, and... Now we're carrying on. Look at the actual detail of the model, and I think it's it's quite good. But it's it's more mostly Hornby's signature moulding of the model. The most separate detail is actually just the front parts, which are quite nice. But if we, we start at the front, as you can see, we've got the DB logo. We've got the grill. We've got working lights. Um, that you can't change between day and night. The marker lights work and the day and night lights, it's stuck on day, which is okay, but if you want to run it at night, typically you can't change that unless you put your own switch, but I'm not that bothered. And we've got the stone guard, that's, if you don't know what it is, that's in case stones, it's going so fast, about 100 miles an hour sometimes, stones go up and you don't want it to break the glass so it gets caught in here and stops it from breaking that. Got individual window wipers, and all the individual parts, and even a chain. All separately fitted. I didn't fit these. They came like that, which is I, I was quite pleased with. It's all nicely fitted. It's all very nicely done. Yeah. And if you look inside, um, all the cab details there. So you've got the seat, two seats, and there's actually dials on the dashboard and everything, and and even the the doors work on the side, which is quite nice. So you can actually stick. Uh, a guy hanging outside or just open it if it's in a shed. Unfortunately the rear guard ones don't actually work but that's fine. It's just nice it's just a nice little gimmick. But um it's very nice and there's actually a light inside uh, but we'll show that with the running and performance. And so if it goes to the side you can see now that the buffers are actually sprung on the front. Both of them are sprung. Unfortunately the back ones are dead just not but I think sprung buffers are just a gimmick, and I don't really, it doesn't really matter to me. So, carrying along the side, so you've got the cab windows, the working door, as we've seen, DB logo, it's number 82146, and nice little thing that Hornby's done, they've painted the ladder on the side of the bogey, which is very nice. Another thing with the bogey, which I only just noticed, is they've actually, well, no one's going to see this, but it's an AWS. Uh, detector. It's on both bogies. I'm not sure if that's like that one in real life. There's one there. There's one there. It's quite. It's quite. It's, it's nice, but no one's going to see it. I've only just noticed it recently. And you can see this type of bogey. It's the one that uses an airbag. As you can see there. So it's nicely molded. It's a nice colour as well. It's not a shiny black. The undercarriage is all a nice matte kind of a matte black. Very. It's quite. I thought it was quite nice. So it's not the normal shininess that you get. If we look at this, 67 is it, it's quite shiny, but um, on the uh, DVT it's, it's a very nice matte colour. But if we carry on. The actual uh, railings, they're actually separately fitted, which is quite nice. But if we get a good look at that, separately fitted. We have the cant rail, which is also fitted, and the warning signs at the top, which is nice. Carry on along. Got the first baggage door. It's all moulded on, so details okay. I, I don't really mind. And you've got the little handle. We have the runner, which the door would slide across if it actually worked. Now the really nice DB logo, which is very prominent. Uh, undercarriage. We have some panels and details underneath. On the other side, there's an actual. There's some uh, writing and stuff on the other side, but I'll show it in a second. Carry on. Second door, got some grills, same bogey, no ladder on it this time. Then you've got a ladder that's permanently on the body here. And another, this is the guard compartment window. And then lastly, the guard compartment door with the, again, separately fitted railings. So they're not moulded on, which is, they look moulded on, but they're quite nice. Door doesn't actually work like the front, but I don't, not many people's going to be bothered about that. We've got the railing. Uh, if you quickly look underneath, we've got the air tank here, separately fitted. 
and you'll notice that the bogies they will have pickups on each wheel either end which is nice so it, it does work really well with the lights at the front it doesn't die that much but we'll get to that also have a NEM coupling so I'll show you quickly can pull it off so just like any other NEM coupling pocket there we go so if you you can replace that with the nice slimline ones that you commonly get these days but those um, Hornby tension lock couplings they're much better for um, for example if you're using them with the Mark 3's which I've got here they're, they're only thick really large couplings so it works well but if you're using it with anything else which you might be uh, you can replace it anyway or put Buckeyes or whatever you want in it whatever reason so that's been thought out well it's a nice way anyway, it goes up and down for hills and gradients and it's it's been done well so carry on to the back so it's all high detail high end detail we've got got jumper plugs on either side we've got cant rail warning stickers and a very nicely molded corridor and doors doors don't work but they look very nice as of the real thing you can see you've got buckeye here pre-fitted again which I was pleased with buffers are not sprung on the back unfortunately interesting with the door it's actually quite a nice quite a nicely done door because if we look at the detail of Hornby's basic Mark III we can kind of see the difference here and the DV2 one is a lot better so this Mark III coach although it runs with it, it looks nice Hornby's DV2 um, with the DVT. It all looks quite nice, but you can you can see which cost more. So that's the rear, and we get to the other side. Very similar to the other side. It's just slight tweaks and difference. So you've got the guards compartment door, got ladder again with the yellow marks. Guards compartment window. If we look in there close enough, you can actually see the guards compartment. There's a little seat and and a table. Yeah, it's very nice. So there's actual compartment there. Another grill, bogey again. Again, we have the baggage compartment door, another baggage compartment door, big logo. The only difference really is on the undercarriage. If we look closely enough, there's actually a little warning sticker on that uh, door, and it's something to do with explosive material. I'm not quite sure. It's so small, but it is actually all there. Nice warning sticker. Again, door, two grills this time on the other side, there is none, so difference, but no one notices. Uh, then we have the overhead catenary warning sign. Again, opening door at the front, ladders, again window, and you can actually just about see bits of the dashboard through that window if you look very closely. Get a bit closer. Yeah. Very nice inside, but we'll show that with lights. But that's the detail. Oh, and so lastly, we're going to the roof. Very primitive. We've got the the sleek, thin light lines that you get on the Mark Threes as well. So it's all very similar, but these are quite much better printed, I think. We have the. Uh, I think this is the aerial that you get on. You get on most, or all modern stock now. So it's like communication. Six, uh, Sixty-seven. You've got the black version there but same thing and even on like mainline locomotives like Hornby's brought out a new twin track sound tornado and that has a even an area on its bunker a uh, coal bunker which is quite interesting so that's nice a uh, little bit there I'm not sure what that is could be an area or could not be definitely not a funnel as I've heard some people say so uh, <laughs> that's wrong <laughs> you don't get funnels on these uh, so that's the aerial carry on not much uh, that it's just the roof but it's a nice color it's a very nice silver. Very nice. And you've also got this white line and a little step there. And that's about it. Very nice model. Okay, so with the uh, taking off the uh, looking under the body. Uh, so look at the instructions. So they're, they're basically instructions they use across all the Mark III DVTs which you would expect. So Mark III DVT, this is the accessories instructions, blah blah. Taking off the body, we'll get to that. There is 
some things that I disagree with. Uh, shows you where the coder goes, which I fitted in with C. If you look at my over here, the coder goes there. This is also wrong, but um, tells you where your pipes and the reason it's wrong is because it's already pre-fitted, but I wouldn't complain because it's pre-fitted and I think it's because it's used on many of the other Mark 3 DVTs, so I think in the past they weren't actually fitted, so you'd have to do them yourself, which that's the reason for that. And that's all standard as well. But it's with the uh, taking off the body, there's a problem it says. Turn the local mode upside down and remove assembly screws shown in Fig 1. This is the problem. It shows five screws, one, two, three, four, five. But however, I found there's actually six screws you have to take out. Otherwise, the guard compartment gets stuck and you may break it off. And I'll show that. Carefully turn the locomotive right way up and ease the chassis down, gently put in the vertical motion. Showing in Fig 2. That's also very misleading because at the front, there are. Um, because at the front of the locomotive, it's. I'll show you. It's very, it's very curvy at the edges, so it curves around at the edges. So it's almost like it's, it's stuck, so you can't lift it straight off because it's, it's trying to grip on here because it's curved at the edges. So, yeah, you see on these bits. So either you have to bend them apart, or I tend to lift the body centre here, and we lift it up around there, the centre here, and it comes. But I'll show you that in a second. So. First of all, screws. Where's there's an, where is there another screw? So, it says there's one at the front, which there is. We can see. There's also two under the bogey. One there. One there. Two under the other bogey, it says. Put the instructions down. Other bogey. It's a little stepper. You can see one right there. There's another one there. And here's where they don't tell you there's a screw. Getting closer, there's one right under the, the, the square thing. I don't know what that square thing is. Oh, that's for the uh, Buckeye. But there's a screw there, and that holds the guards compartment. It's all separate. It's all So like the cab, the reason there's a screw there is because it's a separate compartment that you can't actually access. It's all sealed in, so you can't stick a driver in it. But there are some screws and stuff to take apart. Same for this end, separate compartment. The, re the way you could put a person in there, there's actually a screw on the top here that you take off, but let's do that now. So, uh, no. so that's the only problem with the instructions I've found. There's actually one little bit here. There's another screw. So, only criticism. I don't know how they missed that. I don't know how Hornby missed the screw here. Definitely six screws you have to take out, otherwise the body will just will not come out. But, Maybe they've added the guard compartment later. Okay, so now we're going to take off the body. Um, I like to, it says hold it up so now, I like to sit it in its actual packaging because it's perfect fit for it. So we just stick it in there. And quickly take out the screws. Okay, so that's four screws come out. I made it look a bit harder than it actually is. That's because we're filming because I pressed the time. So that they're they're the long ones which go from base to the body. Um and inside they are the metal thread, not plastic, so you can't shred them. So put them safely to one side. Then we're gonna take off the two smaller screws. So I'm gonna start the guard compartment. Much smaller screw. And it's almost identical, I think. So let me take this one. It has a tendency of getting stuck in there, so we're going to leave that in there. It's because it's, it's got its own little cove, and it's it just gets stuck in there. We we'll have to get it out in a minute. So right. All the screws are technically out. Now you can see the body is is coming off as they say, but you you can see it's it's all dictating around the front bit because it's 
it it pinches around the front because it's got a curve inwards bit. So it's almost to as warm it says on the instructions, but not exactly. It helps to actually take off the guard compartment, otherwise the whole thing's actually stuck when I first did it. It's so annoying. So basically, we just have to gently ease it off very gently because there there are actually some slight lugs on the front and you have to push forward slightly there we go sorry I missed that so it can't oops show the lugs you have to push forward ever so slightly because of these two lugs at the front so we've got this one one there one lug there and there's another one on this side so can't see it very well but keep that in mind there are definitely two lugs right now before we pull the body completely off there is one quite substantial plug and this connects all the lighting in the cab to the uh, motherboard we call it uh, to it so let's just ease it out at the sides very slightly yeah. very simple it's an easy plug to do so there you go, body's off. You can see the, um, there's the screw for the guard, that's the um, thread for the guards compartment, they missed off the instructions, which isn't helpful. So, it's not actually the guards compartment, it's the corridor, actually, I've seen, but you can see you take the screw off there, and you can see the screw there, and this is all explained anyway, so, it's nice, and, yeah, you can't actually get to the cab. Doesn't matter, so, put this to one side safely. And I question, you can see the screw still hasn't come out, so just leave it there. But this is what it looks like um, with the body off then. So all your details at the front still stay there. You have no cab, you just have a big board of chips. And and there's the guards compartment there, so you can see it in a bit better. It's not very detailed, but it's a nice feature, so we're getting closer, and it focuses Put the nice guards chair and a little table, and I'm sure if you someone painted that up, and I know people um fit some strip lighting in it, and they can light up the guards compartment with different buttons, which is fun. So this is the board. So you've got the plug, and it's raised, which is good because um that means you won't actually see this chip in the through the uh, baggage compartment doors, which is good. And that's with this chip, it's quite difficult to avoid it, but I managed to do it, and you can see um. There it is, and the original blanker plug that you'll get with this if you buy it, it's just this, uh, focus on it. you just get this original little plug, you take that out, and if you're going DCC, you stick in your chip as normal, and actually numbers them, so you can see it says 8765, the other side it says 1234, and X1 stands for pin 1. I'm pretty sure, but it's all numbered anyway, so orange is always pin 1, red is always pin 8, so pin 7 is blue, so, uh -huh. so it's all in your, if you buy DCC, if you get DCC chip, it's all in your instruction manual, which is good, so that's nice, and I've crudely stuck it down there with some double sided sticky tape, sponge stuff, hasn't stuck very well, but at least you can't see it through the window. You'll notice these blue wires coming out of the bogey clips. So these clips, you can take out the bogey. These wires go to the really quite nice pickups on the bottom. Of Each bogey literally is identical, just one's got some couplers at one end. And they're on each wheel. They're, I don't see any problems with them. They're really nice pickups. Each wheel, so quite reliability. It's, it's, it's an okay weight as well. It's not extremely heavy like a locomotive. If you've ever use the 67 it's nothing like that that's extremely but there is actually some weight so if you if you see these screws here I'm not going to take them off because it's just not worth it but the screws inside the very so that screw there and there's one there that off the whole undercarriage will come off and there's a nice substantial weight in the bottom which is quite nice and you can see the swivels See, the bogey can never swivel a full 360 degrees, it's got a little pole and it slides around the smiley face, cut out, 
and it would just hit the edges so it won't turn anymore. It's a very nice, well built thing. It's really well built. It doesn't, oh, it bends a bit, very, very slightly. But it's very nice. Right, so talked about everything inside it, we've looked at the detail, so last thing to do is get it on the layout. So let's go down to my layout. Okay, so um, with the layout, uh, this is my layout, so it's, um, it's quite a large one, and my bed is in the middle, if you notice, the one with the Lego bricks, and basically the front section with the big white snow-like heels, they're not finished yet, that's just a plaster, and they're going to be brown, and have grass and everything, but that's a big takeout section that hangs on my wall, so I actually have floor space, and the bit that goes over my bed, which is almost like a triangle bit at the end. That also comes out so I have headroom to sleep. I don't sleep on the railway, uh, to get that clear. My system is operated by an NTE power cap, which I explained earlier. It's a, very, it's a reasonable price system, it's 1.5 amps. Currently only use, I think it's like 5 amps, so I'm still safe. And it plugs into a board over at the and layout, with all the switches on it, and that then has, with the 25 way plugs, an extra board which uses analog point control because on this layout I have both uh, digital point control via a Hornby accessory decoder. Looking at performance, which you can see on the layout. Pickups, well, they, as I explained in the under the body, as long as you have, as long as you clean the wheels really well, because they do get dirty quite quick because. Who likes cleaning their layout? Not me. So, they do get dirty quite quick. And, basically, just clean them. Uh, the way I clean them is, you can either use white spirit with a rag or surgical spirit with a rag. It's basically, it's the alcohol in it that cleans everything. So, I use surgical spirit because it's in my bedroom, so I want a safer substance by a bit. And you just, so you get a rag, and you put a bit of lights, a very small bit. You get your wheels, you see how clean I smell like I've seen this. Rub it while you're turning the wheel. But you can you can see these are dead clean, I've cleaned them before I actually did this review, so it defeats your option. But when you get thick dirt and stuff, I want to clean it because it will affect the performance. You can see the lights on the front start flashing. And um, you can see around the layout, it's both got front and back lights. Again, they're stuck on day, but marker lights, well one of them works at least because marker lights work. Both both work, yeah. So mark lights work. In cab there is a light with DC and DTC I've tested. Uh, the cab light, although it's a nice orangey colour so it looks quite realistic. It looks really nice at night. Typically, if you're a tip one of those typical guys, which most people are, that light should be off while it's running. However, Hornby haven't allowed the space for that or anything with DCC. So DC you'd expect to just be on anyway because it's all linked in, but with DCC you can't actually turn that off either, it turns off with all the lights and lights are function zero as default with any chip and basically the only way you can do that is by rewiring it all, so that's what you can do and it looks really nice, so thank you for watching this review on Hornby's DB Schenker Color Scheme Mark III DVT uh, it's a very nice model and I don't rate models, it's just you watch the you watch the review and you think, do I want that or do I not? I, I would get it if you like modern image stuff and if you want to do a manage, manager's train for DB Schenker, that one we all do, it, it just match up really well, so recommend it. Really nice. Good loco. So it's Cosmic Tracks. Thanks for watching.